Hello, Munir Ajam speaking with another video on the project management educational series. Uh, with this video and the next one, we'll focus on the Pumba guide uh, in order to clarify some of the issues that might be related to this guide. Uh, before we go on, I have to repeat something I've said in many videos before. Uh, since I've been using the Pumba guide for a long time, and obviously since the Pumba guide is quite popular, uh, many of these videos are to help with education on the Pumba guide and better understand it. So I hope uh, uh, when we talk about, for example, in this video we're going to talk about inconsistencies and the next video we'll also talk about missing processes, that this is understood from an educational perspective to better understand this uh, very important reference that is used all over the world and uh, many people use it for certification as well. With this introduction, so let's move on to talk about these topics. The first topic we're going to talk about is inconsistent, inconsist, inconsistencies in the guide itself. Um, and of course, you can listen and you can debate, you can uh, agree, disagree. I would love to hear and get engaged uh, in discussion on these topics. The first thing is if we read the Pumba guide, Assuming we read it, because a lot of people go just to uh, the processes and input tools and techniques and output to study for the exam and trying to memorize them. But if we truly read the Pumba guide, actually maybe reading is the wrong word, if we really study the Pumba guide and understand the Pumba guide, understand it enough to know how to apply it in the real world, that's the key here statement, we would uh, read, for example, the definition of the process groups. Let's talk about initiating process group. If we read the definition of the initiating process group, it says the initiating processes are the processes required to initiate a project or a phase. A project or a phase. Actually, it should be or a phase, or should be a phase rather than project or phase. That's, that's a debate for another point. So if we read that, then we obviously the charter, if we look at the initiating process group, there are two processes only, which is developed project charter and identify stakeholders. If we go to the planning process group, which are 24 processes, it also says these are the processes for planning a project or a phase. Notice the key here, project or phase. Wonderful. We understand that perfectly. Then we go to the table, I think 3.1 in chapter 3, and we see a list of all the processes mapped against knowledge areas and process groups. And what do we see? If you just look at the first line with the integration chapter, what do we read? We read something that says develop project charter, then develop project management plan, then direct and manage project work, and then control, monitor and control project work. Notice, and then we go to closing. I mean, notice in this process group, we hear the word project, 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 project. We go to the closing and we say close project or phase. Now I have no idea whether this is a typo or intentional or maybe I'm just too dumb and don't understand the Pumba guide. Uh, but that raises the question. If the text of the book it says these process groups initiating, planning, executing, controlling and closing are for the project or phase, then that means every phase must have a charter or must have authorization. Let's put it that way. Let's forget what the charter, the word charter right now, and focus what is the charter. The charter is authorization. In that case, every phase must have a charter, and we had a previous video, we discussed this point. Then why does the title of the process is develop project charter? If the charter is a document that authorizes the project or a phase, why is it called project charter? Yeah, I mean, there is a project charter, but why the process? For example, if I want to create a pro if I want to create a charter for the feasibility stage or phase, okay, I don't have a project charter yet. So what do I call that? Just call it authorization. I wouldn't call it stage charter. Or in other word, I cannot use the PMI process for that. I cannot use the PMI initiating processes to talk about the feasibility stage, which is before the project charter. Think about this, okay? Also, develop project management plan or control, or whatever the case might be. So here, this first issue of inconsistency that I'm addressing today is about the contradiction or the inconsistency, at least in my humble opinion or in my professional opinion, 
between the names of some of the processes and the text describing them. Another issue with the Pumbak that we've seen, and again, it might not be an issue, it may be that I, you know, I, am, I don't understand it well, and we hope somebody understands it better than I do and can explain it. Obviously, most of these videos I'm talking about from my own personal experience, which means obviously I could be wrong. Uh, the word audit. We don't see the word audit in the Pumbak many places, but at least we see it, and because as we you know, do courses on the Pumbak guide, we see it in three major areas. Quality audit, risk audit, and procurement audit. If we look at the quality audit, what do we see? Where is it? Well, it's not an independent process, for sure. So there is no process called conduct quality audit or perform quality audit. It's basically part of the quality assurance process. Now, if we think about the word audit, what is an audit? An audit is usually is about reviews to check, to make sure that the team or to assess whether the team is following the organizational processes. So an audit, usually, if it is a quality audit, we want to make sure we're following the quality process. If it's a financial audit, we want to make sure we're following the company financial processes and policies. So an audit is a review of work we are doing or ways we are doing things and check to see if they are complying with the organizational system. Now, in my view, whenever we are talking about reviews or evaluation or assessment of something, that's a control function or control action, if we're going to stick to the concept of the process group. Then why quality audit is part of quality assurance, which is part of the executing process group? Again, I don't know the answer. If someone has the answer, would love to hear it. If we move beyond the, okay, let's say that it's correct. And audit is the execution process. Then we go to risk management. Now, in risk management, there are no execution process. So when we talk about risk audit, obviously it cannot be in planning. So there is only one process uh, outside of planning for risk management, which is monitoring control risk, which is in controlling process groups. So in quality, audit as a function, as a work, as a type of action is listed as an executing process. And risk management is listed as controlling process. Great. Let's move on. One more example or maybe two more, one more. Procurement. If we read the guide, where is procurement? Now in procurement, there is an executing process and there is a controlling process. So we would think it's gonna be is either one of these two, right? Makes sense. If uh, you know, inequality is in executing and risk is in control, it has to be one of the two. Well, unfortunately not. A procurement audit is in closing, in close procurement process. Now, obviously, the purpose of an audit is usually to find issues and make corrections. So if I'm closing procurement, yeah, obviously any issues we've had, I can capture for future procurement, but it's too late for me to fix it or, or, or make correction on the existing uh, procurement process. Maybe because the contract has already been issued, they cannot do anything about it. Maybe, I don't know. I, again, I don't know what the answers are. It just doesn't make sense for me that audit is in three different process groups. Another confusing process, I'm not going to talk about it much, but I will just mention it for now because it's going to be in the next video, is acquire the team. Again, most people, when they hear the word acquire the team, they think, when would we get the team? Well, in some things that are in planning, some say it is in initiating. Actually, interesting enough, ISO, uh, put as an initiating initiating process, a process that called established project team. However, in the Pumba guide, it is an execution. So what's happening to the project manager or the uh, project team? Next video will expand more on this. Another topic that sometimes people pick on, and again, I don't really know the answer for this one, but I'm just gonna raise it, is execution. If we understand the Pumba guide and the planning, when we talk about scope management and planning and scope, we develop the work playground structure, and which means we are developing, we are planning, uh, and by planning we are breaking down the project work to define the different work packages. That's in the planning and scope management. Then we go to control and scope management, and we find out in control we have to validate the work is done. 
So in planning, we plan the work, and then in scope and control, we control it. But there is no process for doing the work. Now, I know what the answer for this usually, I think I know, that people said, well, executing the work is a product-oriented process, is not a project management-oriented process, then it doesn't belong in the, in the PMBOK. Doesn't make sense to me. Yeah? In planning, I have to plan the work packages. I come up with a list of work packages. In controlling, I have to make sure they're all done. Yeah? So if that's the case, then WBS is not a, uh, uh, should be only focusing on project work. It shouldn't be focusing on scope. Yeah? Which is probably true because there is something called PBS, which is a product breakdown structure. We have recorded a video on that before. So the question here, yeah, is WBS, when we talk about WBS, is the intention here focusing only on project management activities or project management packages? Aren't the work packages are work that has to be done that is product oriented? For example, building a foundation or uh, uh, developing writing features for a software. Isn't this work? Or that's not in the WBS? If it isn't in WBS, then when is it done? Yeah, and that would relate to maybe in another video I'm going to record, maybe not today, on the difference between project management and project delivery. And maybe some of the problem is in project leadership. So maybe the question of management versus leadership versus delivery is an important topic that I will record this, uh, another video on this. Maybe later today, we'll see how much time we have. Uh, thank you. Uh, next video is more about missing processes.